Christchurch Cathedral, Oxford, England, is home to a rather special choir. Part of a tradition of sacred choral music that stretches back about a thousand years, it's no idle boast to say this is one of the finest choirs on earth. Christ Church Choir is made up of professional adult singers and boy choristers who are educated in their own school around the corner. Twice a year, they have special audition days for potential choristers to come along with their mums and dads and be tested for a place in the choir. The choir's musical director, Stephen Darlington, does the testing himself. The first test I'll do is to play a note of the piano and get them to sing it after yeah. I played it. Yeah. And if that's the most telling thing of all, actually. <laughs> <laughs> the highly specialised musical training the boys get here has the added bonus of being generously subsidised by the cathedral, so there's quite a lot at stake. Do you get nervous on their behalf? Um, no, I don't, th I don't think I would get nervous. I, th I hope I'm sensitive to how they feel. Yeah. And sometimes I get a bit nervous in advance that there's not going to be anybody who shows <laughs> up and I'm not going to have a choir in a year's time. A staggering 31 years ago, I too came for a test, like young Scott here, at another Oxford choir school, so I know how he's feeling. What note do you want me to sing? Second note in the bottom. Can you play it again? <laughs> well, I hope Scott does better with that test than I did. What he doesn't know is that we've hidden a camera in the piano to eavesdrop on the auditions. I'll just sit out here and look cool. Here's the first one. Kids are coping just fine inside. I'm not sure about their parents, though. Well, Stephen, I see you're looking at your notes there. How yes. was it as a morning for you? O of those that we heard, there were three who really stood out, and uh, I, I hope very much that they will have done well on their academic tests and we'll be able to take them into the choir. What Scott has joined is a choir that's virtually unchanged since its foundation in 1526, and eventually he'll be singing services every day, including Christmas and Easter, in a cathedral that's been here since the 12th century. As if that weren't enough, the choir will also, during his time in it, tour Brazil, Japan, Australia, New Zealand and the USA. So he'd better get used to packing then. What duvet covers do you need? Because we need to take that in. Scott's excitement at joining the choir is shared by his mum, Amanda, even though it will mean him boarding. Where are we? Duffel coat? Yes, uh, I've just put that in. I think it's such an amazing opportunity and it's something that is completely unique. To be a chorister in any cathedral in England. What you're really saying to me is, this is for him, this is a fantastic opportunity for him, so you're oh, going yes. to just put your feelings to one side. But isn't that what every mother wants? They want the best thing that they can for their child. Later on this afternoon, this empty cathedral school will be echoing to the sound of the choristers arriving back after their long summer holidays. For the new ones amongst them, it'll be the beginning of an experience that will change their lives forever. I can still feel in my stomach that strange mixture of excitement and nervousness at the beginning of the new term. 
and frankly, rather than me. Do you think he's looking forward to it? Yes, I think so. Uh, he has his uh, reservations about um, sleeping at school. Empty, isn't it? But the thing is, he can't have one without the other because it's, it envelops his whole life. I think once he's in the choir, from what I hear, that it just becomes the most important thing in their life. Have a lovely week and phone me, all right? Give me a ring. OK, bye. 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 Even on the first day of term, the choristers are up and off to their morning rehearsal at the bracingly early hour of 8am. Still, they don't look as rough as I do. First rehearsal of the term. Is this even torture or is it a bit of an ordeal? It, it's quite an ordeal, actually, um, because I'm not sure what the voices are like. But my basic philosophy is that I don't think there's any point in anybody doing it at all unless it's fun. They've got to want yeah. to do it. And actually, I, th I think that that probably applies not just in the context of this rehearsal I'm about to take, yeah. but in the context of any music making. If you're really going to achieve something at the highest level of art, it's got to come from within the people who are doing it. Find a foray requiem, could you? Which is also coming up this term on Remembrance Sunday. And... Um, uh, go from De Morte, second, uh, second note of the page, and one. No, no, not, not more. It's not De Morte. That sounds terribly English, doesn't it? What is that? Cockney or something. De mo Morte, Morte. Make the vowel richer. You know what I'm after? Anything that, that makes you think of richness. Chocolate ice cream is what usually comes to my mind. Belgian chocolate ice cream. Italian chocolate ice cream. Back to bottom of 63, please. Letter J, that's the first bar, bottom line. And one. I thought that was absolutely excellent. I really like the sound that you're making. Lovely and rich. Well done. That's a very, very good start. I think we're going to have an excellent turn. If you had to say to someone what it was like being at a choir school, what sort of things would you say? Well, I'd probably say it's fun because you, you get to do things that other people don't get to do. And it's a really special choir, so it's better than a lot of other choirs. Mm. Well, you have to be very grown up and you have to be very responsible. What's the best thing about being a chorister, do you think? Um, probably the singing. <laughs> yeah? Or... Tuck shop. <laughs> <laughs> Chocolates. Well, I like the garlic bread they have at lunch. Do you? Garlic bread? Mm. Didn't know garlic bread in my day. And what's the worst thing about being a chorister? Worst thing? Um, probably getting things wrong and Mr. Darnton shouting at us. <laughs> Who's the naughtiest boy in the choir? <laughs> well, I, I think the, the true, the real answer to that question is that they're all naughty. And that's what I like, because they've all got uh, a lot of um, life and vigor and, and um, spirit about them. And it's in a sense, it's that that you can take and you can channel into a certain direction, and that's what makes them good singers. There's someone who's left who is mega naughty. Really? He um he kept on flushing people's bags down the toilet and all that kind of stuff. What, so that they actually flushed away? No, he just flushed them and um, got them really, really wet. 
Now, the reason why all these cathedral and college choirs are made up of just men is because the woman-hating medieval church didn't approve of girls joining in. But now, it's all changing. In 1991, a bold experiment in cathedral singing began that had cassocks flapping and ruffs ruffled in every corner of the kingdom. All male choirs singing in English cathedrals may be a thousand-year-old tradition, but in the last two decades or so, some cathedrals have been experimenting with the introduction of girl choristers as well. Most famous of these are the pioneering and immensely successful girl choristers here at Salisbury Cathedral. Oh, no. Come on, back off. <laughs> the chief architect of this gentle revolution was Richard Seal, conductor of both boys' and girls' choirs at Salisbury. That this charming and brilliant man should have been the subject of vicious criticism for his innovative decision seems to me incredible. It's a very different, it's a lighter sound, it's a more transparent sound, no less musical. It's like comparing, oh, Nuit Saint-Georges with a Chablis, you know, <laughs> or, or Reynolds with a Gainsborough, where you've got, there's, there's just two different characters. Mm. And to start mixing them, would be debasing the coinage all round and it would be the, the wrong thing to do. When you're actually working with them in the song room now, what to you is the difference in terms of atmosphere or working practice? There is, there's a very different atmosphere. <laughs> the boys are much more, shall we say, easygoing, a bit laid back maybe, um, not quite so desperately keen to get on with it yeah. and perhaps to get it right particularly quickly. Mm. Um, theirs is a sort of timeless look, I think. <laughs> they've, they've been on the job for 900 years. You can't bully them too much. Yeah. But the girls, on the other hand, are they're much more eager to get on with it and get it done and get it right. Um, I won't say ambitious, but it's, it's sort of going in that direction. There are people who believe that the arrival of girl choristers into a cathedral like this might mean the beginning of the end of the boys' tradition. But these curls don't threaten anyone or anything. They're an added bonus that we should welcome and celebrate. I, for one, hope and believe that in another thousand years there will be other Katie's, Sophie's and Sarah's singing here in this broad and forward-looking church. Well, nature took its unstoppable course, and I turned from a sweet chorister into a gangly student with a Jackson 5 hairstyle. Coming here to Christchurch with its superb music in a desperate attempt to get a degree and a girlfriend. Yes, well, I got a degree anyway. Because Christchurch is uniquely a cathedral and a college, the choir here, as well as having choristers from the choir school, also includes students who are arriving here today at the start of the university term. 
And these students are going to spend the next three years singing Evensong every day and working feverishly hard at their academic studies. The students will be singing alongside a handful of professional full-time singers. Among those having an introductory vocal warm-up at the old Tom is new student Peter Garner Winship from Hull. He's been given rooms in the same building overlooking Christchurch Meadows that I was in at the turn of the century. Well, Peter, it's quite a view to wake up to every day, isn't it? I know, it's terrific. It's sort of like living in the middle of a film set. Do you think you'll take it for granted after a bit? Quite possibly, but I hope I'd never do. Oh, hey, look, smart new desk. I think they've tarted these places up since I was here. 21 years ago, today, <laughs> I was doing what you were doing, which is unloading everything and uh, sort of unpacking. Feel, feel worried about breaking anything or putting any coffee stains on stuff. Yeah. It all seems so sort of spicy new. It does seem new. pristine, doesn't it? Let me help you with the Elgar. Of course, the other big uh, change, I notice, is that there are girls here now, which there weren't in my day. What goes on in here? That's the, they've given me a shower. Your own loo. I know. And shower. It's just yeah. like a hotel. <laughs> in my day, you know, a communal bath down the hallway. Um, that's very nice. Yeah. Um, so tell me, how are you feeling about this? You know, your first rehearsal this evening, an Eden song, mm. you know. Try, can you, can I'm fairly you terrified, up? really, are you? to be honest. But I, I sort of, I'll be glad to get this evening out of the way. I mean, when right. you think about it, you say, look, you're a bit nervous about tonight, but the fact is that hundreds of people over the centuries mm. have been in this position that you have. Doesn't that make you feel a bit better? Uh, no, I don't think so. I think that's part <laughs> of the pressure, really, is, is that's really what bothers me, I mean, in a sense, is that I sort of think there's a lot to, a lot to live up to. Now, most Western European choirs are divided up into four parts, starting with the basses, the people with the most testosterone, people like Peter, on the bottom note. La. Then you have the tenors, with slightly less testosterone, but more girlfriends. La. Then you have the altos, either sung by men or women. La. And finally, singing the tune at the top, either sopranos if they're women, or trebles if they're boys. And all together. No. So this is the end of the flow through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. This rehearsal is the first time Stephen Darlington gets to hear all the different voices of this year's choir together. Much of Stephen's time will be spent trying to blend these voices into a smooth unit. The trick is to place experienced old-timers, like Giles here, next to the anxious newcomers. Men and boys alike are expected to be note-perfect in the music, day in, day out. Even the very youngest of the boys will be following the rehearsal with total concentration. What most of all do you hope that these boys will take away with them when they leave? I hope they will have gained enormous expertise as musicians. I hope that they will have learnt what it's like to work within a close-knit community which is all aiming to achieve the same uh, objective. And I hope what they will really take away with them is a sense of a dimension that is outside themselves so a, a sense of, um, of not just of humanity, but of a, of a deep uh, spiritual significance, which is something which is terribly difficult to define, but which I think is achieved by musicians working together, singing uh, music at a high level, but um, ultimately from the heart.
One of the things that has most struck me making this series about choirs is what a good mood they seem to be in most of the time. It's impossible not to conclude that singing together with other people must be great fun. They're never lonely and they have a wonderful way of expressing themselves. You know, anybody can join a choir of some kind. All it takes is a bit of time, a bit of enthusiasm and at the first plunge, a lot of courage.